Good morning, everyone. Bonjour à tous et à tous. Thank you very much for the warm welcome here this morning. Uh, it truly is a pleasure for me to join you this morning as your Member of Parliament for Canada Carleton, but also as a proud champion of the incredible research and innovation that happens in this park each and every day. I'd like to acknowledge uh, my many colleagues who have joined us here this morning, namely, of course, our Prime Minister, uh, of course, Premier Ford, and the ministers and colleagues who have joined us. I especially want to thank Minister Champagne this morning, who understands the importance of Nokia's growth here in this riding, and to Canadian R&D as a whole. So thank you for seeing this historic moment, this investment to fruition today, and for being a champion for Canada's technology. For those of you who work in the park, you know what a special place this is. With rich telecom routes, an incredible history, and I know an even brighter future. This is a connected innovation community and a world-class 5G hub. We have over 33,000 people who work for the companies in this park, over 540 companies that call Canada North home, companies operating within just a few kilometers of this location. These people, these businesses, and this local ecosystem contribute over $13 billion to Canada's GDP annually. Nokia is the largest employer here in the park, and as we hear, set to grow. With a deep history dating back many decades, Nokia's history begins back with Newbridge, which was then acquired, of course, by Alcatel, which became Alcatel-Lucent in 2006. And for the next decade, Alcatel-Lucent grew with acquisitions, a division of Nortel, then Tropic Networks, then Nikina Systems, and then come 2016, acquired by Nokia. And the rest, of course, is history. Since then, we've witnessed continued excellence, continued leadership, and not just in optical and internet protocol networking technologies, but also as a good community partner and an incredible employer of choice. These buildings are full of world-class engineers, incredible talent. My personal thanks to Jeffrey, Andy, and to James for the many conversations over the last few years and your commitment to getting to today's announcement. Nokia has a strong commitment to youth, bringing hundreds of co-op students each year and supporting our community with events like the Inside Ride, which raises money for families dealing with child cancer. And these are just a few examples of Nokia's commitment to our community. This company, this team, is truly world-class. And with today's announcement, I have no doubt of Nokia's continued excellence and growth here in Canada and success in building out the globe's communication infrastructure to support 5G wireless technology. The Canada North Technology Park is a prime location for future growth, and Nokia is an incredible company demonstrating further commitment to growing in Canada. With that, it is my great pleasure to introduce our Prime Minister, the Right Honourable Justin Trudeau. Bonjour tout le monde. Merci, Jenna. Je suis très content d'être avec toi ici au Parc technologique de Canada Nord, le plus grand en son genre, en son genre au Canada. Jenna, c'est entre autres grâce à ton travail qu'on est tous ensemble ici aujourd'hui. Merci de toujours être là pour pousser pour Canada et pour les gens de ta communauté. I was thinking about it actually as you were listing uh, the length of time uh, that companies have been established here. 
And I suddenly remembered that it was when I was in university, about 30 years ago, uh, that I first came uh, to visit a, a technology company here. I had a friend of mine who was working here and she was showing me around and showing me in the engraving on chips and motherboards that was happening here 30 years ago. And I don't think, I mean, it's great to see you, you here understanding this now. I don't think Canadians appreciate just how much leadership in this country comes uh, from this area here. Canada has been a really important driver of some very big parts of the Canadian economy uh, for a long time, and with this announcement today, uh, is going to be even more over the coming years. Je suis très heureux, évidemment, d'être ici en compagnie uh, de Mona Fortier et du ministre François-Philippe Champagne aussi. Uh, Mona, uh, ton leadership uh, au niveau du Conseil de, du Trésor, uh, ta réflexion uh, sur l'avenir qu'on est en train de bâtir, uh, technologique pour le gouvernement, uh, est extrêmement important et on est très content de t'avoir ici. Et François-Philippe, chaque fois qu'on se rencontre pour des annonces, c'est des bonnes nouvelles pour l'économie canadienne à bien différentes façons. Alors, je suis toujours content d'être ici. Of course, Premier Ford, uh, what a pleasure to be back with you for a big announcement. Uh, we've demonstrated over uh, many, many uh, months and years now uh, that big things happen when we work together. Uh, Ministers Fideli and Fullerton, thank you so much to see you as well. When the federal government uh, can work uh, with the provincial government here in Ontario to deliver good, well-paying jobs for our citizens uh, that are laying track uh, for the future we're building together, uh, not just for Ontarians but for all Canadians. It's always a good day uh, when we're seeing these great projects that make our economy more competitive and our economy uh, growing around the world. Mayor Watson, Jim, uh, great to have you with us as well. Uh, you've been a strong advocate for this area for a long time, uh, and it's great to see uh, this continuing to build on the vision that you've laid out. And of course, so glad to be here with uh, Pekka and Jeff for having us at the Nokia campus today and for leading this exciting new project. Uh, Pekka, the impact of having the global CEO of such a significant company as Nokia linked into the future of everything we do, uh, recognizing the importance of what we're doing, not just in Canada, but right here in Canada. Uh, it's a real boost for everyone who's worked hard. And I have to pause and say, you know, regardless of the contributions of the provincial government, of the federal government, of the municipal government being partners, that's not why Peck is here today. Peck is here today because he is recognizing the extraordinary contribution of the workers here at this facility. Uh, you know, researchers, scientists, uh, engineers here at Nokia, uh, here in Canada, here across Canada, uh, who have contributed extraordinarily, not just to the growth we've seen in the past, but who are building the future, not just of this region, not just of this country, not just of the world, and they are the reason you are here, and we are so grateful that you recognize that. Aujourd'hui, on est ici pour parler d'un projet de collaboration avec Nokia, qui a pour but de faire progresser la recherche et le développement pour la technologie 5G. Les réseaux sans fil 5G jouent un rôle essentiel dans plusieurs aspects de no notre vie, comme le travail, les achats qu'on fait en ligne et les communications avec nos proches. Les réseaux efficaces, c'est aussi important si on veut faire du progrès dans des secteurs comme les technologies propres, la médecine et l'agriculture. L'avenir vert, l'avenir euh, l'avenir euh, de l'économie du savoir, ça se passe pas sans numérique, sans la connectivité uh, que Nokia et d'autres sont en train de faire. This is an exciting announcement that will help us advance 5G technology. This project is about innovative tech research and development happening right here in Canada and creating new opportunities, including for our talented young people. But more specifically, this is a project that would build a world-class R&D hub that will transform the wireless technologies we rely on every day. This project will help build a stronger future for Canadians, and that's why our government is here today to help it move forward. Notre gouvernement est en train de bâtir une économie forte et compétitive pour l'avenir, et on continue de mettre les Canadiens au cœur de tout ce qu'on fait pour créer de bons emplois. By investing in this new technology, we're helping deliver the technologies Canadians expect 
in a world of fast-paced change. We're also creating opportunities across the tech sector in Canada. Not only will it make us more connected, but this project is expected to create more than 340 good jobs in this high-paying and fast-growing sector. It will also increase co-op and internship opportunities for post-secondary students, as Pekka was saying earlier, uh, for about uh, every uh, fourth workstation here, uh, there is an intern here uh, learning and growing. And that commitment to developing the workforce of, of tomorrow uh, and ensuring diversity in that workforce as well, uh, including uh, bringing in almost 50 percent women uh, in their internships, is really, really important, not just uh, for the fairer, uh, more equitable society we're building, but for the excellence of the, the products and the research that is done. By advancing Canada's 5G capabilities, this will help add real value to our economy because 5G has the potential to add $40 billion to our economy every year by 2026. This fits in to a series of announcements we've been making over the past year. It started in the spring, also Philip and I, and Doug was there as well at Stellantis uh, and some other auto sectors talking about uh, electric vehicles, talking about the battery supply chain. Uh, we were just last week at uh, Rio Tinto uh, in Sorel, Quebec, uh, talking about the important investments in a green supply chain around the critical minerals that are needed for the auto industry. I was uh, just on Friday or Thursday uh, in Hamilton. Uh, meeting with DeFasco, uh, where investments the province and the federal government are making in moving off of coal is not just going to clean our environment, clean our air, but make sure that Canada and the green steel produced in Canada is continuing to be globally competitive and that Canada indeed will lead the world in the production of cleaner, more high quality processes that the auto industry here, uh, but industries around the world uh, need to a much larger degree. The, at the end of the summer, we welcomed uh, Olaf Scholz uh, to Newfoundland to talk about the hydrogen economy that's being built in Canada as Canada develops uh, the industry to be the provider of energy to a net zero world in the coming decades. Canada is remarkably well positioned for that in a really key way. But of course, none of those tech advanced technologies, none of that happens without the kind of connectivity that we're here talking about today. And it's not just the high-tech sectors. It's not just you know, hydrogen production and uh, just-in-time EV manufacturing that needs that instant connectivity. On Friday, I was in a farm, on a farm just outside of uh, Kitchener. And the level of technology that goes into it, from, uh, from monitors on every dairy cow to make sure that their heartbeat, their chewing rate, their location is covered, uh, to see what stage they're at, to uh, be able to measure exactly how much fertilizer is going where on the field using geolocation. The need to connect everything for maximum efficiency, for maximum productivity, and for maximum beneficial impact, minimizing waste, minimizing uh, excess energy, is going to be the key to moving forward. So Canada is a country with extraordinary natural resources, and our advances on critical minerals and energy are things that the world is going to need right now because we're doing it environmentally, because we're doing it sustainably, because we're doing it with a high quality of labor standards and quality of life for workers. And that's a key differentiator from places around the world. But on top of that, Canada's advances in communications and digital technology, our advances in world leadership on AI, our moves forward on quantum technologies, these are all the things and the connectivity that you get from 5G and eventually 6G is happening right here in Canada. Nokia is here today because the work that Canadians have been doing over decades, but particularly over the past number of years, is positioning us to be a world leader in all the things 
that the globe is going to need and value in the coming years. That's why this announcement matters. That's why uh, Canadians are coming together with an incredibly optimistic view of the future, despite the very real challenges of the world that positions Canada in an extraordinarily propitious way for the coming years. Donc aujourd'hui, c'est un autre exemple du travail qu'on fait pour stimuler les investissements dans l'ensemble de l'économie et s'assurer que tous les Canadiens en profitent. Companies like Nokia keep investing in Canada because they know we have the talent and forward-looking vision that they're looking for. We're excited to see all the potential they'll bring forward with this project and we'll keep working to create and attract well-paying middle-class jobs across the country while we build an economy that works for all Canadians. Merci beaucoup tout le monde. Merci, uh, Monsieur Premier Ministre. Uh, thank you very much for your time and remarks. It's a privilege for Nokia to work alongside the Canadian government on building Canada's green digital and 6G future to fuel Canadian-led innovation and to drive well-being and prosperity, not just in Canada, but around the world, too. Of course, the nucleus of Nokia Canada's operations are based in the province of Ontario. And we've worked very closely with the Ontario government and Invest Ontario over many years to keep creating new and better opportunities in and for this province. So I'm thrilled now to welcome to the stage the Honourable Doug Ford, Premier of Ontario. Well, good morning, everyone. And uh, again, thank you, thank you, Jeff, for, for that introduction. It's a real pleasure to be back in Ottawa. Every time I'm here, we have a great visit and alongside uh, with you, Prime Minister, and I just have to add what you were, you were saying earlier. I can't remember, I know your family's been involved in politics for decades, so of ours. I can't remember a time, and forget these political stripes, I can't stand them, but anyways, forget the political stripes. Two areas of our country, be it the province of Ontario and Canada, that has worked so closely together, no matter if it was billions of dollars in the pandemic, billions of dollars in the auto sector, into the, uh, the tech sector as well, and so on, green steel, and, and so on and so forth. So I appreciate the, the partnership. Here with uh, the hometown gal, Minister Fullerton, thank you for representing the folks here, and my number one salesperson, Minister Vic Fidelli, and I, I know Francois, I always say you're Canadian's number one salesperson, but you two are a dynamic team, you work well, well together, and uh, again, Minister Champagne, great to see you, along with Mayor Watson, Mayor Watson, I just want to I want to thank you. I want to thank you for all the work you've done for the people of Ottawa, and I want to wish you all the very best. If you ever get bored in your retirement, call us up, and we'll keep you busy doing something. So, <laughs> and and Becca, thank you for having the trust in in our province and our country to invest here. And uh, we look forward to working with you hand in hand. And of course, Jeff and Andy and your, and your whole team uh, here at Nakia, who's made this morning uh, possible. Because today we're celebrating a monumental investment here with Nokia. We're celebrating $340 million to expand Nokia's new Canadian headquarters and put down even deeper roots right here in Ontario. Supported by a $30 million investment by our government this expansion will create 344 new direct jobs. That's 344 in-demand, high-skilled jobs for the people in this region. Bringing the number of Nakia's employees in Ontario, uh, over 2,000, uh, in fact, I think you said 2,400, so keep them going. Keep them coming, I should say. Uh, Nakia's investment is a clear indication that the Canada North Technology Hub will compete as a global tech leader for decades to come. And uh, I, I was hearing it was 540, I thought it was 550 tech companies, but watch out Silicon Valley, we're coming, we're neck and neck with you folks, and we're gonna create that uh, environment. It shows that Ontario it remains a top tier destination for tech businesses to invest and grow. Like the global auto companies that are choosing Ontario to build the cars and the batteries of the future, Nakia knows 
what we know. Ontario has some of the best and brightest workers, bar none, anywhere in the world, right here in Ontario and especially right here in Ottawa. Over the past four years, we've come so far. We're making real progress on the ring of fire as we connect critical minerals and clean green steel to the future of electric vehicles and batteries, all made right here in Ontario. And again, another example where we're working with the federal government uh, with the ring of fire and the critical minerals. We have 34 of the most critical minerals anywhere in the world right here in Ontario. Shovels are in the ground on game-changing transit and transportation projects, another great partnership we're doing with the federal and municipal governments. More women and men are entering rewarding careers in skilled trades. Friends, we cannot take this progress for granted. As we navigate global economic uncertainty, our government has been hard at work building an economy that can weather any storm. An economy that never loses sight of what matters most, and what matters most is helping people succeed, helping workers succeed with better jobs and bigger paychecks. That starts with creating economic conditions that attract investments in growth and good jobs. We've cut the red tape, red tape to reduce the cost of doing business here in Ontario. These are staggering figures, over $7 billion annually. That's $7 billion year after year after year. We all know it's a, a, a real challenge out there worldwide. We're competing against everyone, but with a partnership of the federal government, the provincial government, and municipalities, uh, we've created the environment and the conditions for companies to thrive and prosper and grow. We've kept taxes for people and businesses low. We're investing in skilled trades and work, the workforce that's prepared for the jobs of today and tomorrow. We're building roads, highways, and infrastructure that tackle gridlock and keep people moving. The roads, highways, and infrastructure that get goods to market sooner. And we're making strategic investments to improve the province's competitive advantage, including the $30 million to help Nokia bring hundreds of new jobs to Ottawa. As we continue to build an economy that's prepared to help people and workers through any uncertainty, I need to give a shout out to our federal and municipal partners standing with us today. When it comes to creating jobs and helping the people of Ontario, it's been a full Team Canada approach. Whether it's the $16 billion, as I was mentioning, in investments in over in the last 18 months with electric vehicles and batteries, or transitioning to the clean green steel, as the Prime Minister mentioned, in Hamilton and Sault Ste. Marie, and we're going to be working with Stelco as well to have all the three steel manufacturers on the same page. The results are absolutely incredible. Together, we're building Ontario. Together, we're getting it done. I want to thank you, and God bless the people of Ontario. Thank you so much. Thank you, Premier Ford. As you might have gathered by now, everyone, Nokia is all about innovation, and as Pekka said, creating technologies that help the world act together. Our next guest is someone who also spends a lot of time thinking about innovation, which is why I'm happy to be working with, together with the Minister and his team at ISET on this project. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Honourable Francois-Philippe Champagne, Minister of Innovation, Science and Industry, to the stage. Well, this is the smile of 300 million, you know. Uh, I cannot be more excited than that uh, this morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, you said it, Prime Minister Premier Ford. This is about Team Canada winning. I was listening to both of you. This is Team Canada winning and being at the forefront of the digital innovation. And PECA, it's happening right here in Canada, in Ontario, in Canada. So, Premier Ministre, it's always a pleasure to pass the time together. We see it regularly, these days. It's a pleasure because I know that Vous êtes un ardent défenseur et promoteur de la science, de la technologie, de l'innovation. Et ensemble, on est en train de bâtir une économie qui fonctionne pour tous. Et je dois dire que 
euh, aujourd'hui, si on est ici, mesdames et messieurs, c'est grâce vraiment à l'appui du premier ministre. Mais Pékin, vous l'avez entendu, c'est la vision du premier ministre qu'on est en train de réaliser. Et je dois dire que sans lui, on ne serait pas ici aujourd'hui. Alors, Monsieur le Premier ministre, merci de cette vision-là de faire du Canada un champion dans le monde. Moi, je suis souvent le, le, le fournisseur de choix éco-responsable du monde. On le voit dans plusieurs domaines. Et ce matin, c'est un bel exemple. Alors, merci, Monsieur le Premier ministre, parce que vous, êtes, euh, euh, vous nous appuyez à chaque fois qu'on a un projet comme ça, qui est, je dirais même, une opportunité générationnelle. Uh, Premier Ford, what can I say? It seems like every time we share the podium, it's all about jobs and growth. So I think uh, let's, let's see each other more often, I would say. We have a lot uh, uh, to do. And you mentioned what we did in steel, what we did in the car. And I think uh, the world is taking notice. Uh, I'll tell you, I was in Japan recently, and people would say, boy, there's things happening in Canada. So this is the kind of vibe we want to provide around the world. I see Goldie either, which is nothing, uh, president of the Canadian Business Council would agree with that, that everywhere we go, we promote Canada. Uh, Madame la Ministre Fortier, je dois vous saluer puis vous dire merci avec uh, Jenna. Tout ce que vous avez fait, uh, parce que je dois dire que Jenna, depuis le début, c'est elle un peu l'idée derrière ce grand projet-là. Oui, on est ici aujourd'hui, mais Jenna, je dois reconnaître qu'avec euh, Mona, vous avez fait un travail exceptionnel. Si on est ici aujourd'hui, c'est parce qu'il y a une vision. Et je dois vous dire merci de m'avoir rappelé à chaque moment euh, d'aller plus vite. So I just want to say thank you for being on my back at every step of the way to make sure that we will deliver not only for Ottawa, but for Canada, and I would say for, for the region. So thank you, Jenna and Mona, because without you, uh, listen, you were the spark uh, in, in making sure that this would happen. Minister Fidelli, my friend, what can I say? Uh, it's nice to be with you again. And you are a great partner, I would say, in turning vision into action. And that's what I like most, because when we meet, it's all about action. It's all about delivery. Pekka, I knew from our first meeting in Espo in Finland, and I went back to my text message. So we go back to May 27. Uh, when I was there, uh, we had the same vision. The only difference, I did not agree with you that uh, you would beat us uh, in overtime on the ice ring that week uh, in Finland. But apart from that, we agree on about everything, that joining forces to lead and to be at the forefront of the digital economy and the 5G technologies. I would say we were in uh, firm agreement. And I want to say thank you for the vision, because at that moment, you shared a vision that would make Canada, I mean, Pekka said it, Canada is, a, is one of the global centers. This is not just in Ontario, uh, Premier in Canada, Prime Minister. Uh, this is around the world. So Canada is at the uh, forefront of what's happening in, in Nokia. So I want to thank you for your leadership, because I know as a global CEO, just like a Prime Minister or Premier, you have a choice of where you're going to do your things. And that you flew this morning, or yesterday, I should say, uh, from California to bless us with your presence and to send a message that uh, this is a vote of confidence in Canada. Um, this is a vote of confidence in the people here of Canada. And I know you're a good friend of Canada, so I just want to say thank you again, uh, if I may say, my friend, for being here today. Uh, I just want to say also greetings, obviously, Mayor Watson. I'm sure this is a good moment for you. You've been waiting for that, and we're delivering. Uh, I just want to say Jeffrey as well. Jeffrey Maddox, uh, you're, you're there, Jeffrey, just there. Um, I just want to say thank you, because you were also on our back for quite some time to make that happen. So uh, <clears throat> I want to recognize you were one of those who always push us to do more. And I think $340 million and beyond is exactly what's happening this morning. But I want also to, uh, uh, Minister Fullerton, uh, great to be doing things here. And we'll continue, because uh, as the Prime Minister and the Premier said, I think the world recognized that this is a place in the world to invest in. And uh, I would say our best days are yet to come. So you can trust on uh, me and Vic to continue to drum the beat around the world to make sure people come uh, to invest. Uh, I want to say also to the CEO of Invest of Ontario, Invest in Canada, the new CEO and Invest in Ottawa, uh, you have been great partners uh, in making that happen. So I just want to acknowledge because uh, the Prime Minister said it, this is a team effort. And, and you've been part of the team in making that a reality. And then now, uh, I'd like also to extend a special welcome to our guest, the Ambassador Roy Erickson of Finland. Uh, Mr. Ambassador, uh, you're the head of mission here in Ottawa. Uh, we want to thank you. And we have our own uh, Ambassador of Canada in Finland. Now I just recognize you, which is with us here. So, Ambassadors, uh, great to have you. It just say that, ladies and gentlemen, that's a big day. That's a big day uh, uh, for Canada and for technology around the world. And today's a clear demonstration that Canada and our skilled workers will play a big role 
a really big role in developing the technologies of the future. And uh, Prime Minister, if you, um, if you allow me, I'd like to stop there and just say to the workers, to the employees of Nokia, to the more than 2,400 people who make that a reality, it's really thanks to your knowledge, your know-how, and your expertise that we can have an announcement like this this morning. So I want to give you a big round of applause because many of you are here today. But I will say without you, there would be no such announcement because uh, I remember when I talked to Pekka the first time, he recognized that, you know, the people make the difference. And I can tell you when you go around the world, the first thing people ask us is about talent. Talent is... I would say the new goal. That's where people come here is because we have the right people. I just want to acknowledge you because you've been doing that for 40 years. And the Prime Minister mentioned in his youth and, and even Jenna uh, was here at the beginning. So I just want to say thank you. En effet, uh, vous l'avez probablement réalisé, mais Nokia est l'employeur le plus important uh, de la grappe de télécommunications ici à Ottawa. Avec ses installations ici à Canada, l'entreprise joue un rôle fort dans la région, je dirais même en Ontario, au Canada et même à travers le monde. Et l'investissement d'aujourd'hui de plusieurs centaines de millions de dollars va assurer la place de Nokia ici chez nous. Mais ce qui est important, c'est aussi pour les décennies à venir. On vient de s'ancrer ici dans la région pour les décennies à venir. Le travail de fait Nokia ici à, à Canada depuis plus de 40 ans va faire une énorme différence euh, dans la vie de tous les jours des gens. <rire> On le sait, les services sans fil Internet sont aujourd'hui indispensables pour pratiquement tout. On a juste à penser des appareils connectés pour le travail, pour l'école, nos déplacements, et bien évidemment, rester connectés avec nos proches. Et l'annonce d'aujourd'hui d'un projet de plus de 340 millions de dollars, il faut le dire, 340 millions de dollars qui va être investi ici, va créer, comme je pense euh, le Premier ministre Ontario le disait, plus de 300 nouveaux emplois, et c'est un début, mais va aussi permettre de faire une toute nouvelle série d'activités de recherche et développement autour de la 5G, et même, le Premier ministre le disait, même la 6G. Je peux dire, hier soir, I had the privilege of having dinner with Pekka to kind of brainstorm what 6G could be. I understand 5G, but he tells, in, in essence, 6G will be faster than 5G. So that's, that's the way I can put it. <laughs> Now, I won't pretend to be an expert here, obviously, because uh, I'll leave it to the team of Nokia uh, to do that. But I'll try to explain why, because you often need to start with the why in life. Why this project, one that will create more than 300 highly skilled jobs right here in our neighborhood, and a huge steps in early innovation is so important for every single Canadian. If you look around today, uh, who doesn't have a smartphone? Who does not have a tablet, a laptop, even smart watches? And these devices are as common as they are convenient in our daily lives. But at the same time, and here comes the punch, uh, with the increasing number of connected devices, today's networks can get crowded, or as we'll put it, a virtual traffic jam. That's why the 5G technologies that Nokia is working on right here in Canada is so important because they will ease the traffic. So that what we're doing here is going to really make a difference in people's life. And whether you're using these devices to work, to, to go to school, to commute, or just connect with loved ones, you want them to work well. And I would say you want them to work fast. And as we're looking at a connected economy, that's why the work of Nokia, you always try to see what's in it for me Well, Canadians will benefit from the very latest technology as we move to the 5G, being connected, being fast and reliable. So, en terminant, let's seize the moment. I would say let's be ambitious. Et ensemble, faisons de Canada et du Canada un champion mondial de la technologie et de l'économie numérique. Merci, mesdames et messieurs. Bonne journée à tous. Merci, Ministre Champagne, uh, Ministre Fortier, MP Suds. Um, your vision for an innovative, competitive Canada and Ottawa in a green digital future and your partnership in bringing that vision to life is sincerely appreciated by everyone here at Nokia. Now, I'm happy to welcome another great partner of ours to say a few words, Minister Fideli, uh, of course, a champion of economic development and job creation in Ontario. Um, Nokia have had the support of him and his team throughout the development of our plans for a new cutting-edge R&D hub. Together, we will help cement the Ottawa Tech Cluster, not just as a Canadian, but a global leader in talent attraction, innovation, and commercialization. Please welcome the Honourable Vic Fidelity, 
Minister of Economic Development, Job Creation and Trade. <laughs> Well, uh, thank you very much, uh, Pekka and Jeffrey, uh, Prime Minister, Premier, all the guests. Look, I I'm going to go off script here because everybody has been introduced at least eight times now, so there's no sense to – page one of my speech will be gone, but I do want to – I'll look at the teleprompter flying trying to figure out where we are now. <laughs> what, what, what I do want to say is uh, when I think back over the last few years uh, where we were – I was in uh, the, the, uh, the, I call it the bunker in Corbeil doing our cabinet meetings, and we did this all the time. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Well, it's thanks to Nokia that you could be heard now. I think that's really the message that I want to deliver, because that's why we're here today, uh, to thank you for your resounding uh, uh, support in the past on keeping Canada, keeping the world connected, and that's why we're here today to celebrate this fabulous expansion. So thank you very much, Pekka, Jeffrey, Andy, and all the team. <clears throat> Together, we're building Ontario. Our government is very, very proud to support the $340 million expansion of really good-paying jobs here in Canada. Together, we're building Ontario, and we're proud to uh, support this project with $30 million through Invest Ontario. Thank you, Trevor, for your dogged uh, pursuit of this investment. Nokia's expansion really is a game changer for the people of Ontario. You've heard it before now. There's 344 people that are going to come to work for the very first time. These are highly trained, highly skilled people, and it will continue to put Canada on the map as an IT hub for development. This new state-of-the-art RD facility will accelerate the development of innovative technologies and secure Ontario's position as the global leader you heard so many times uh, today in advanced technology and in the digital future. This project will broad broaden Ontario's 5G, 6G as we've heard, uh, cyber security, artificial intelligence, machine learning, patent portfolios, all while enhancing the digital identity management and security. It really signals that Ontario is a great place to invest and grow and will encourage even more investments in the Ottawa region, supporting further opportunities for hardworking families. You know, Nokia adding 100 uh, additional internships um, so that more students will benefit from the competitive opportunities that will lead them to jobs of the future. That is, Pekka, that is absolutely remarkable and truly leading for the people of Ontario and the people of Canada. And we all know that this is just the beginning because when companies look for investment opportunities, they look for a place that has the skilled workforce that you heard Francois talk about, that supports growth and investment. And as the Premier has said from day one, that is open for business. And <clears throat> we know that top talent from a wide variety of sectors, strong R&D ecosystem, world-class manufacturing. We have everything here. You heard from Premier Ford, the $7 billion in, in reduced uh, uh, costs over the, every, each and every year. This is what's attracting people initially. And then they find out we have 65,000 STEM graduates each and every year in Ontario which is part of the reason we've become the number two tech cluster in all of North America. So congratulations to everyone. Thank you for choosing Ontario, for making this historic investment. And now I'm going to turn it over to the hardest working MPP that I know, Minister Marilee Fullerton. Well, you know, what an exciting day, and I, I can tell you as someone that's uh, grown up in Canada and spent decades here, that every now and then, you know, there's always this baseline of excitement. But then all of a sudden, there's something that surges up, and it takes so many people to create that excitement. And I think of uh, having the privilege of, of being in Canada for so many years, of having that, that uh, opportunity to meet the people to live with the people that have made this happen. So not only you know, during COVID, but before COVID and, and into the future, are you solving the problems that face us today? You are all creating the future. So 
tremendously grateful to all of you. Uh, and I'm also, as uh, the local representative, the provincial representative here, as well as uh, a minister in the Ontario government, but I really want to thank um, Nokia for its tremendous leadership and its, its amazing commitment to making this happen. And as we've heard, it takes multiple layers of government, but ultimately it's about the people that take the risk, look at the innovation that's needed, see the future, have that vision, have that persistence and dedication, determination and diligence to get it done. And all of you are here today, and I know that this is the beginning of this ripple uh, for, uh, for Canada, for Ottawa, for Ontario, for Canada, and I would suggest to you around the world. The leadership here is utterly amazing, and uh, I'm so, so grateful for that. So thank you for the, uh, the commitment from Nokia, for the opportunity that you're creating for people in this area and across Ontario and Canada, but the businesses as well, because there will be a ripple effect. It's not just uh, you know, a, a vacuum that, that this will happen in. It will have a far-reaching impact. And so the, the planned headquarters and the R&D facilities will be another centerpiece for Canada North. And, and we've heard about the people uh, that have made this happen. Jenna, you talked, to, we were talking about your impact and I wanna thank you for doing that. And I go back to the days of Terry Matthews starting some of the, um, the programs here and having that vision. And so we need to not only honor the people that have come before us, uh, but acknowledge the very significance and talent of the people here today and those that will take over the torch long after we're gone. Uh, so it's not just the jobs, it's also the future for our, our students. The hundreds of programs that will be developed and the students that will be able to take over as we move forward, we need that talent. It's a global competition for talent and uh, we have that ability to retain these workers right here. Uh, look at AI look at cybersecurity and the 5G technologies, and it seems like no sooner do we have a technology than it's out of date and there's a new one coming. So it's really about keeping up, um, and that's what we do very, very well here. And I'm, I'm uh, really pleased that the Premier could be here today. Uh, you know, I know he's such a champion for Ontario businesses, along with Minister Fideli. There's nobody that does it quite, uh, quite as well as the Premier and, and Minister Fideli. And I know that uh, everyone benefits when we work together across governments, across l layers of talent and expertise. And so, you know, I know that the Premier talks uh, a lot about technology, he talks a lot about science, and uh, I, I, I know that Canada, having the largest business uh, or lar largest tech park in all of Canada, uh, he is very aware and he references uh, Canada and Ottawa on an ongoing basis and I think this event today is going to give them a little more to talk about. So thank you again to the leadership team at Nokia. The Ontario government is proud to be supporting your expansion, future growth and your continued success. Thanks to everyone. Thank you, Minister Fullerton. We are grateful for your ongoing support in transforming this campus into a next generation R&D hub and true live, work, play destination in Ottawa and Canada. Minister Fideli, thank you for your support uh, for this project now and moving forward. It's so appreciated. Uh, finally, local support from the City of Ottawa has been invaluable. Uh, members of City Council recognized for the importance of this project have become excellent partners throughout this journey so far. So far. To speak a little bit more about this, I am happy to welcome His Worship Jim Watson, Mayor of the City of Ottawa. Hello, merci beaucoup, mesdames et messieurs, Monsieur le Premier ministre Trudeau, Monsieur le Premier ministre Ford, les membres du cabinet, les députés, uh, Monsieur le Président, c'est un honneur pour moi d'être ici. When you're the last speaker, basically everything's been said, but I still will take my two minutes. Um, I am retiring uh, uh, as mayor of Ottawa in 27 days and six hours and 12 minutes and <laughs> three seconds. Uh, but I do want to thank uh, Nokia very much for your investment and your confidence in the city of Ottawa and in particular Canada and Canada North. As the Prime Minister pointed out and the Premier as well, uh, we have over 500 companies in this uh, park. It's the largest tech park in all of Canada. 
Uh, it contributed $13 million to the gross domestic product of Canada, which is quite remarkable, and home to over 23,000 skilled workers. I also want to thank uh, Prime Minister Trudeau and the Premier. They have to be the most accessible leaders that I've ever had the opportunity to, to deal with. The Prime Minister is always there at the Big City Mayor's Caucuses, uh, representing the Government of Canada, working with us in a collaborative fashion. And that makes a big difference, Prime Minister, for you to be there. Uh, the Premier is legendary for handing out his phone number. He gave uh, his phone number to Kathy Curry's mother, and he called <laughs> uh, uh, her mother earlier today. And it's not just, uh, he does answer the phone. I've called him on a couple of occasions, and it's Doug Ford. Uh, so thank you for your investment and the federal government's investment. And thank you, uh, Mona, uh, Minister Champagne. Uh, Jenna was the former executive director of the Canada North Business Improvement Area. She knows this sector inside and out. And to all of the executive members of the Canada North Business Association, thank you for your confidence. The employees, Invest Ottawa, Michael, thank you very, very much. And Ministers uh, Fideli, uh, Minister Fideli got his uh, training in uh, both the private sector and as mayor of North Bay, and he knows the importance of all three levels of government working together. C'est vraiment important pour les trois paliers du gouvernement de travailler ensemble pour uh, la, la, la communauté. And I thank our city staff who worked very closely with uh, Nokia to ensure that we rolled out the red carpet and not the red tape to get this project shovels in ground as quickly as possible to create those extra 300 plus jobs. So uh, to um, all of the people who have gathered here today, thank you very, very much for this great investment. Marilee, you're a great champion for Canada North and the tech sector, and we appreciate your uh, ongoing advocacy around the cabinet table. Encore merci beaucoup. It's an honor to be here and as one of my last events as mayor. And what great news for the people of Ottawa, Canada North, Ontario, and Canada. Thank you. Merci. Thank you, Mayor Watson. Your guidance and collaboration has been fabulous, and we appreciate your fierce commitment to this community. It will be missed, uh, as well as to Nokia. Thank you, Ottawa City Council, for all the support you've demonstrated throughout this journey. Listen, we've just heard some amazing testimony to the fact that Nokia has an important role to play in growing the tech ecosystems and competitiveness of Ottawa, Ontario, and Canada as a whole. And we take that role very seriously. Of course, we're not doing this alone. We've heard from many of our federal and provincial partners today. There are many others who I'd be remiss not to acknowledge the Invest Ontario team led by CEO Trevor Dauphiné and their board of directors. You are wonderful ambassadors for investment attraction to Ontario and great partners to Nokia. Thank you. Uh, the team at Hydro Ottawa led by Bryce Conrad, CEO. Thank you for your collaboration. We look forward to con uh, continued partnership with you on this project in the future. And finally, as we've said uh, several times today, to all of our um, Ottawa employees, our Nokia Canada employees, you are the centerpiece of this announcement. None of this would be possible without your incredible work, your contributions to Nokia's culture, your passion for your community. Thank you for all that you do. Now, we're going to take some media questions as the next phase of our agenda today. Um, and so I'm going to invite uh, Prime Minister Trudeau uh, Pekka Lundmark, Premier Ford, Minister Champagne, Minister Fideli to the stage to take a few questions. Thank you. I will now start with questions for 15 minutes. Um, we've been back here trying to make sense of this announcement a little bit, and it would be good to have some clarity on who exactly is giving money to it and how much it's for. Uh, the provincial announcement says it's a $340 million investment from Nokia on a $770 million project. Mr. Fideli's up there calling it a $340 million project. The federal government uh, is not giving any money yet. You're embarking on negotiations for SIF funding, but there are different amounts in different releases. Meanwhile, Nokia is saying Ottawa's a great place to do business. It's central to their corporate operations. They have so much money, they're doing share buybacks. So I guess my question for the Prime Minister is, can you clarify exactly how much money you're giving and what would happen if you didn't? Uh, 
I don't believe I mentioned it in my speech, but we're giving up to $40 million uh, to uh, help with this uh, important investment that Nokia is making uh, in Canada North, uh, in the future of 5G in Canada, uh, demonstrating the strength of Canadian uh, workers, demonstrating the vision that we share, uh, working together to make sure that Canada is leading in the digital transformation at the same time as we lead uh, in the uh, green transformation, in the uh, knowledge economy. Uh, this is good news for Canada. It's good news for Ottawa, good news for Ontario, good news for all of Canada. Next question. Bonjour, Christian Noël de Radio-Canada. Vous permettrez, s'il vous plaît, de diverger de l'annonce d'aujourd'hui. Ça fait quatre ans que le cannabis est légal. Le marché noir représente encore 50 et l'industrie dit avoir besoin de l'aide du gouvernement pour lutter notamment contre le marché noir. Est-ce que vous êtes prête à réduire les taxes sur le cannabis, mais surtout, êtes-vous déçu qu'on soit juste à 50 du marché noir réduit? Je sais que euh, on, la légalisation du cannabis a été une grande étape euh, vers l'élimination du marché noir, vers une assurance euh, de euh, qualité de protection des consommateurs. Euh, mais on sait que ça allait prendre du temps et c'est en train de prendre du temps et on est toujours là pour être un partenaire pour les prochaines étapes. On voit que euh, le marché euh, légal euh, du cannabis euh, a augmenté énormément, est parti de zéro euh, avant qu'on légalise jusqu'à maintenant. Euh, mais il y a encore beaucoup de travail à faire et on va continuer euh, de le faire. Next question. Uh, Neville Hunt, uh, Community Voice here in Canada. The question is for Premier Ford. Um, companies like Nokia choose to be in Canada because of our green space, quality of life. Uh, your government has not made any effort to stop Club Link's plans to build on the Canada Lakes golf course despite a perpetuity agreement. When will you start working with the Canada community to maintain our public green space? Well, as you, as you know, that, uh, that was in front of the courts. The courts have made a decision. We respect that decision and uh, we'll always continue working with the, the region to uh, have a strong green space. Uh, you, you stepped in at Glen Abbey when the uh, Ontario Land Tribunal was still, was still looking at it, so it doesn't matter if the, where it stands now? Well, the courts have made a decision on that, and I don't interfere with the, the courts. Prochaine question. Et bonjour, c'est pour M. Trudeau. J'aimerais vous parler d'un article ce matin du euh, bureau d'enquête du Journal de Montréal qui révèle que 44 employés de Service Canada ont été congédiés pour avoir fraudé la PCU. J'aimerais avoir votre réaction à cette nouvelle-là et savoir aussi si vous êtes confiant que l'agence va réussir à aller récupérer une bonne partie de l'argent qui a été fraudé. Les gens se souviennent bien que quand la pandémie a frappé, on a vécu des moments euh, d'incertitude extrême. Euh, le gouvernement fédéral a choisi d'être là pour les gens à travers le pays de façon extrêmement rapide et de façon extrêmement généreuse. Parce qu'on savait que si on allait passer à travers cette première vague de la pandémie, les gens devaient rester chez eux. Ils ne pouvaient pas aller travailler. Et une des façons de s'assurer qu'ils puissent rester chez eux, c'est de s'assurer qu'ils puissent avoir de l'argent pour payer l'épicerie, pour payer leur loyer. C'est exactement ce qu'on a fait. On a envoyé la PCU de façon rapide et généreuse à tous ceux qui en ont besoin. Et ce n'est pas juste la bonne chose à faire pour protéger de la pandémie. Comme on est en train de voir maintenant, c'était la bonne chose à faire pour avoir une économie qui revient rapidement, en pleine expansion, en plein épanouissement, malgré les défis qui demeurent à travers le monde. Alors, ça a été la bonne décision. On a choisi d'envoyer ces chèques rapidement pour qu'on puisse passer à travers. Mais évidemment, on est en train de s'assurer que ceux qui ont commis des actes de fraude ou des actes criminels, pendant qu'on était là pour aider les plus vulnérables, fassent face à des euh, conséquences sévères. Et c'est exactement ce qu'on est en train de faire. Next question. Kevin Gallagher, CTV National News. My question is actually for Premier Ford. Um, there's an inquiry going on right now, today, about the use of the Emergencies Act by the federal government. Many of the witnesses who have testified, residents, businesses, have said that they were feel, felt abandoned by the police, the city, the province, and the federal government. So I'm wondering um, why you are not uh, one of the people who's testifying at this inquiry, but also if you can think back to February, do you think that the federal government was justified in using the Emergencies Act to lift the occupation of downtown Ottawa? Well, we have some of the top officials with the OPP testifying, and uh, yes, I, I stood shoulder to shoulder with the, the Prime Minister 
Uh, the, these uh, folks were, were, you know, camping out, everything from whirlpools, disrupting downtown, disrupting the lives of the people of Ottawa. Uh, we worked collaboratively with, with the mayor and the, uh, the prime minister over at the borders. They were holding up a billion dollars of trade every single day getting across our borders. We were getting phone calls from governors. It's unacceptable. Uh, myself and, and I know the prime minister believe in free speech and if you want to protest, protest. If you want to come down to uh, Queen's Park and do cartwheels, but if you disrupt the lives of the people of Ottawa every single day, disrupt the lives of economic flow across our borders, I have zero tolerance for it. Thank you. Prochaine question. Uh, good morning, David Aiken, Global News. Question for the Prime Minister. We have a regime in Iran that has all but declared war on women. It's abusing women systematically, murdering them, repressing them. You lead a government that has very specifically a set out a feminist foreign policy. Wondering why you haven't gone as far as, say, the United States, declaring the IRGC as a terrorist group, uh, declaring more Ar Iranians uh, persona non grata in here. Why are you softer on Iran than President Biden? Uh, on the contrary, Canada is one of the countries with the strongest sanctions regime against Iran in the world, and we're continuing to. Uh, over the past over 1,000 days since the horrific shootdown by Iran of a commercial airliner, including uh, about 150 people ha headed to Canada, um, we have been forceful on holding Iran to account at, on the international stage, including also by working with partners uh, like the UK, Sweden, and Ukraine uh, at international bodies like ICAO uh, and the UN uh, to continue uh, to hold Iran to account, uh, including international courts of justice. Um, we've also moved forward uh, over the past year, um, days on some of the strongest, uh, announced some of the strongest uh, sanctions against individuals, uh, but we're also using uh, the kinds of measures that Canada rarely uses that we only actually have used recently in the case of Bosnian war crimes and the Rwandan genocide to list uh, the Iran Iranian leadership under measures around IRPA for uh, their use of terrorism, their use of, of uh, human rights violations, uh, and uh, the continued uh, attacks on civilians. We will continue to look for all measures that are strong and appropriate to hold this murderous regime to account. We stand with the women of Iran, from schoolgirls to grandmothers. We stand with the allies with them. We stand with people around the world as they protest this murderous regime. We call on Iran to transform its approach. Next question. Hi, David Thurton, CBC. I'm going to ask this question to Premier Ford. Going back to my colleague Kevin Gallagher's question. How come, Premier Ford, you're not testifying at this inquiry? Were you asked? Did you decline? I have not, I have not been asked uh, again. Uh, I want to repeat what I said earlier. We have top officials uh, from the OPP that were running the operation with conjunction with municipal uh, police agencies and uh, the RCMP. You know, our police did an incredible job. They, they were very peaceful, they moved forward, and I am so proud to stand here and back our police right across this country and right across this province. I'll always support our police. They're professional, they're polite, and they ended up getting the job uh, done. Thank you. Next question. Good morning, question to the Premier. Uh, Chris Curry, City News. Um, we're one week away from the municipal elections here in Ontario. Um, you've offered strong mayor powers to the mayors of Ottawa and Toronto but the top mayoral candidates here have said that they won't be using them or they do not plan on it. Um, so what does that say to the powers moving forward um, if they might not get used here in Ottawa? Well, that's going to be their choice. I'd be very disappointed. You know, I, I lived in, in the municipal elections and down uh, with my brother at the City of Toronto. So you, you, you become the mayor and you get this big nice office, you're called mayor, but guess what? You have the same vote as a single councillor. Why? They, they need the opportunity to move their agenda forward when they get voted in from every single uh, ward in, the, in their region. Uh, they, they should have a little more power to make things happen and uh, rather than have the same vote as a single councillor. So hopefully uh, they'll be able to use it. Hopefully they'll be able to use it to build attainable and affordable homes. 
Uh, and that's what we're, we're focusing uh, on with these municipalities, working collaboratively in cooperation to continue uh, building attainable and affordable homes. And uh, if you have a, a certain part of council complaining day in and day out, we need more homes, we need more rentals. Oh, by the way, don't build in my backyard, build in the guys down the street. So hopefully we'll uh, move forward and uh, we're using Ottawa and Toronto uh, as, a, as a test area per se. And then we're gonna move forward a year after that and give it to other regions, uh, other larger municipalities. So when you get a, uh, as elected as mayor, it means something. Next question. Uh, yes, Liebert Hume, Canadian Press. This question is for both the Premier and the Prime Minister. Um, children's hospitals, uh, hospitals across the province are being overrun now and flu season hasn't even hit yet. What are you doing right now, specifically Premier, uh, to help those hospitals out? And Prime Minister, will the federal government be stepping up to help as well? Over the past couple of years, uh, the federal government stepped up with over $70 billion in investments in health care uh, above and beyond what we normally do uh, over the course of, of the year. This is because we know that supporting Canadians in their health is key uh, to building a stronger future in every possible way. Uh, we've been working uh, with ministers, with uh, premiers on the next steps on more longer term health funding. There's still ongoing discussions on making sure that we deliver results for Canadians. Uh, but uh, there is much to do and we're gonna be there as partners to do it. I think one of the things to remember is flu, flu season approaches is people gotta get vaccinated. Uh, whether it's getting the flu vaccine or getting up to date in your COVID shots. Uh, there are actually uh, new formulations out now that are, are up to date to cover both Omicron and the original uh, strain of, of COVID. Uh, and we encourage everyone to get those vaccinations, uh, to keep pressure off of our hospitals, of our frontline heroes who are working so hard uh, to keep people safe, but also keep pressures off of our economy and communities. If we're able to get a high enough level of vaccination, we reduce uh, the danger of needing to take other health measures to make sure that we're all safe and not overloading our hospitals. Uh, and I look forward to continuing to work uh, with premiers like Premier Ford on uh, delivering uh, a strong healthcare system uh, for the future. Well, right after this meeting, I'm going to meet the three CEOs of Queensway, Carleton, uh, Chio, and uh, Ottawa General. They're great CEOs. I talk to them all the time. Uh, they've given me some great ideas. Uh, and then when I, when I speak to all the CEOs of hospitals across the province, it's not a money issue. We're pouring money in at an unprecedented amount. Just uh, this year alone, we're increasing it by over $7 billion. We've created 3,600 new beds, acute care beds. We're adding another 3,000 uh, beds on top of that. We've invested over $40 billion in building 50 projects, the largest build in healthcare this country's ever seen. And right here, actually right here in Ottawa, you have the second largest project over at Ottawa General uh, through the leadership of Cameron Love, which I think the world of, uh, in the entire country. Uh, we're building more capacity. So there's 50 projects, either they're getting a new hospital, they're getting an addition, again, $40 billion. And the College of Nurses just came out yesterday and said uh, the largest expansion of hiring nurses, over 12,800 nurses, right here in Ontario were hired and we still have three months to go. We're building new medical universities across this province, uh, bringing more doctors into this, this province uh, as well. So we're gonna continue focusing on, on healthcare, but folks, we can't do the status quo. The status quo is not working. You know, when I talk to the CEOs, they all agree and everyone says it's not a money issue, Doug, process issue, but continuing to pour money into a system and keep doing the same thing and expect a different result, it just is not gonna work. So we're working with the sectors and uh, we're getting advice from the experts, the people that are on the front lines day in and day out. On top of the 12,800 new nurses, we've hired over 11,400 uh, new healthcare workers as well. So we're really, really ramping up. But again, folks, the status quo is not working. Uh, collaboratively, together, uh, we have to come up uh, with a better way of delivering health care in a more efficient uh, uh, manner. On va prendre une dernière question, one last question. 
Hi, I'm Laura Glowacki with CBC Local. This is for uh, Nokia Canada, I think. Um, can you give us some more details of the facility? Where is it going to be in Canada? When are hires going to um, come online? Like, when can people start applying for jobs? Like, any details like that about the facility? I'd be happy to answer that. Thank you for the question. Um, we're hiring today, so if anyone's so inclined, we can go to our Nokia.com website. There are plenty of jobs open. <laughs> Um, and we've been hiring through the pandemic and we've been engaging students through the pandemic, which has been quite a fascinating illustration of how creative the team has been to find a way to, uh, to bring students into a workplace that was largely closed for, just like many Canadian businesses were physically closed for extended periods of time. So we've been very creative about finding ways to engage the community and our student population. Um, we will be based on this property and we'll do an unveiling in a moment, but the, the quick answer is we will rebuild on the east south corner of the uh, the property some new towers um, and eventually move our, our team from here into those towers so we plan on uh, continuing our hiring efforts bringing new staff in all the time uh, PECA has a, a grand mission for what we're seeking to do as a company not just uh, here locally but we have uh, we operate in 130 countries locally or globally rather um, we're a large corporation really trying to make an impact on how uh, the world acts together. So as you might imagine, there's lots of opportunities for the company. We'd love to hear from uh, prospective employees. Thank you for the question.